Welcome to everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Palm Sunday, and we have some special guests, obviously. Jerry and Leslie Chapman. And Tom Pennish. Did I say that right? Yeah. And your wife? Candace. Candace. This must be your camera set up in the back? I don't recognize it. That's your camera? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Meg's here. Gordon's here. Welcome to everybody. Bob's here. Good. You all look. They're all here. Meg's here. Meg's here. I know it. I said that. So welcome to Palm Sunday. We're going to uh, worship like normal, if you will. Um, uh, Jan's here. Jerry has a fantastic song that we'll play at the very end. Uh, it's called Awake Sleeping Giant. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. So we will have a potluck after service and we'll have a church business meeting. And then next Sunday, of course, is Resurrection Day. So I've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, next week, we're going to have a sunrise service here at 7 a.m. That will be a community service. And Dan's going to give a short message. I've asked the Butler boys if they would drum again. I got a tentative yes. And so we'll do that at 7 o'clock and we'll have a breakfast potluck after that. And then there will be an Easter egg hunt for the kids at 10 in the morning next Sunday. And Kelly's been working hard with Melody Schoen, so there will be pony cart rides here at 1015. What's that? As long as you can fit in the cart. Yes. As long as you're not too heavy, you're probably okay. And then we'll have worship at 11 o'clock. So two services next week, Easter egg, let's see. I got this right, seven o'clock service. We have a breakfast, potluck afterwards, pony rides, pony cart rides at 10 o'clock, and no, Easter egg hunt at 10 o'clock, and then pony cart rides at 10.15. And then our normal service at 11 o'clock. So everybody, bring everybody. All right, any other announcements? Last chance. God is good. God is good. All the kids up, Scott. What's that? And all the kids up. You bet. We're going to have a kid so. Would you, Jim, I'm going to ask you to pray. Would you lead us in prayer and open us up? Scott. Sorry. No, go ahead. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Another day. Praise you. Worship you. We just ask that. Everything we do will bring glory to your name. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So after worship, we're going to have Jerry and Leslie give a word, and then James is going to lead us in communion. And we have another announcement? Okay. Um, Mom is going to be moved to Sunnybrook this week. Oh. And so we need your prayers. Our whole family needs your prayers. <laughs> Because we're going to be moving mom out to the valley. Uh, she doesn't want to go, of course, but I think, I think the Lord has been blessing us and we're going to be ready. <laughs> Thank you. Sunny working in Caravallis, so we yes. will pray. So, Father, we amend the prayer and we say, help Katie and help the family as they move yes, her. Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes. All right, so, Dan, you want to invite the kids up? Okay, kids. Do you want to come up to the drum, do the first song, and lead us in worship? Open us up. This working okay, Dave? Need to be closer? Yeah. Okay. Please. All right. And Miss Larita is your drum leader.
kids? Can we give the kids a big hand, a big round of applause? They led us in worship. And kids, you are dismissed from the drum. Thank you for the beautiful drumming.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb to be praised and worshipped. On this Palm Sunday, we lift it up to you, Lord. We say, worthy is the Lamb yes. to be praised Hosanna. and worshipped. Hallelujah. What you have done, Lord, is beyond speech. It's beyond words. You have loved us.
YHVH is his name. Behold the hand, behold the nail. Yad He Vad He. Behold the hand, behold the nail.
cover me, Lord. Yes. We do hunger and thirst for you, Lord. To know your joy and your Amen. pleasure, Father. To know the glory yes. of your presence. Yes. Lord. And especially once you know, once you accept him, once you trust him with your life, then you can walk in the power of his might. Yes. We want to walk in the power of your might today, Lord, and forevermore. Lord, we're going to pray right now for our families that when they come to know you, when they come back, that they will walk in the power of your might. Yes. Yes. We claim that yes, in Lord. faith today. Yes. So we invite you, Lord, Thank to rule in our Thank hearts. Yes. Thank you. Open our lives, Father, yes. before you, yes. Lord. Yes. We invite you, Lord, to teach yes. us your ways. Yes. Lord, express your life yes. through us. Yes. You are covering us. And the song sings about that. Cover me, Lord. Yes.
the others. I'm going to come join you on the drum for this last song. Oh, yeah. Ready? Lord woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning, probably um, maybe a month ago. And he woke me up and he said, I heard these words. Wake up. Sleeping giant. And I said, I just sat up and I heard it and I knew that was the Lord. And he said, uh, Wake up, sleeping giant. Yes. And so I started writing down, and I'll actually probably need the mirrors for that too. You want to grab the mic and read that? Just right here. Yeah, go ahead and read. What, this is a quote from Billy Graham. 1975. It is a conic speech at a conference on Indian evangelism. Graham said to the Native American leaders, you are a sleeping giant, the original American. You are now awakening just around the corner. You may become the spiritual superpower in this country that could change not only America, but the world. Good. So, can you get a little bit more monitor, on, or is this doing okay? It's cutting in and out. Jerry, can I use that? Please, I'm going to mute the one you're wearing. Won't be the first time somebody wanted to mute me, so... Uh, <laughs> So he was speaking in New Mexico, I believe, is where he was speaking. Yes. And the majority of the audience was First Nation. You know, Hispanic First Nation mix. But we received that years ago. Richard Twist quoted that in his book. I think Sukina did the same. And a number of our uh, native leaders embraced the point. So we believe it. We're, but, you know, we want to humbly approach this by saying, if we're a sleeping giant, we're a sleeping giant in him. Because he's awesome. He's powerful. He's everything. And so, and in that quote, didn't it say that in the last days that the Native American people will be the evangelists that will yes. evangelize? the world it will help so as we travel across this planet we are uh, invited we are cheered in essence we need this voice uh, Richard and the whole gang there's probably 15 of them going through the airport you couldn't miss the fact that these were Native American people and uh, you know some of them are wearing vests or buckskin or things in their hair a lot of the native men had beautiful locks, just like this guy. And uh, there were Middle Eastern people in other aisles, and they're shouting to the to the guys, going, uh, "You Native Americans, are you Native Americans?" And they would all look like, "Yeah, we're at the airport." Uh, they said, "They stole your land." Whoa. At the airport. Wow. Uh, other places, the doors open in the traditional people's land, like Tibet and some other places, and they embrace the Native American people, but they don't seem to think that we look like a threat to them. We are American people. America, American people tend to be known as arrogant across the planet, and uh, we need to walk humbly, and I know that's what they but God could have blessed us, the church, to walk humbly. So the voice, I believe, is you, not just First Nation, I'm just saying, especially today, with your voice, God wants to use you, if not with this thing, maybe with this, or serving in any way. Serving is worship. 
no yes. matter what it is, if you're sweeping, cleaning up garbage, whatever it is, mowing a lawn, you are serving the king. You're serving the kingdom. God wants to use you for that. So this song came uh, in slumber, and I quickly sat up and wrote it all out. I don't know it all yet. So that's, that's the iPad. <laughs> Actually, I could use a boom. Oh, I can use this. Yes. Yeah, I can use this.
I guess that's a clear message. with uh, Navajo ministers. Come on. Um, these Navajo ministers, along with the presidents and vice president of their nation, who are Jesus followers, have been praying together every Monday and Tuesday. Right. And there's something significant that happening there. Um, they're, they're having... You know, it's like, I don't know how many tribal chairmen, how many tribal presidents are holding prayer meetings on a weekly basis with their local pastors in the area. But it is happening in New Mexico now with the Navajo Nation. So, you know, that's a huge praise report right there. And then there was a, one of those intercessors uh, who works in one of the darkest places in New Mexico where there's drugs and crime and occultism. Uh, you know, that was the first capital of the United States was founded there. I don't know if you guys knew that in 1598, even before Santa Fe. Anyway, uh, he announced a couple of weeks ago that um, he is seeing in the spirit a nuclear explosion involving the Navajos and other native peoples. And this thing is beginning to take off. He's seen it in the spirit, and he's watching First Nation people coming alive in Christ. And they're doing the battle of intercession. And so we just want to, I just want to say thank you, Lord, that we are waking up. And it's not just First Nations people. The body of Christ needs to wake up. The body of Christ, it's time. And that's what Jerry said when he got that song at 4 o'clock in the morning. And he came walking up towards me. And he said, and I want you to know, it's not just First Nations. And I said, it's the church. And so we just say, Father, today we declare that the body of Christ, every man, woman, and child, tongue, tribe, and nation, is waking up. We're waking up for you, Lord, for your honor and your glory, Father God. And we thank you for you, Holy Spirit, for waking us up and getting us ready for such a time as this. Amen, preacher. Amen. <laughs> See, 43 years, last year, August, we've been married. This year will be 44. Look forward to that and many more. Wow. And I honor her and uh, lift her up, encourage her. You know, some of us as men, we tend to have a little bit of control on that. But God is saying, release your partners. Wives, release your men. Men, release the women because... We're good. we're missing we're missing something if she's not cheering we're missing something uh, and so she got prayed over prophesied over just a week ago about her going out 
We yeah. have these prophetic prayer meetings sure. on Thursdays, and this is like a, a realm. What it is, it's like you're looking up here at me, and I'm looking out at you. And, and if I choose, I can see all of you. Really clear, I see what you're wearing. Some of you look really good. Especially the women. Especially the women. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but the Lord is saying, I want you to look at me. And I said, show me, Lord. And he says, look in the spirit. And then I closed my eyes and I looked out. And all of a sudden, when I watch an event, if it's a concert, if it's a real powerful ministry, I'm looking into the spirit realm above. And then I begin to understand and see what the Lord is trying to teach us. We have a tendency to look at man. Yay God. I love the shirt. Yay God. Stand up, model it, because we yay God. This is Tom Panich. We invited him to come to drum today for you guys. And he lives in, and Candace live in Vancouver. So thank you, Tom. So as the Lord shows us how to enter into to worship, enter into his messages. And I remember years and years ago, and before I was an elder in church, we would have uh, conversations out to lunch or whatever. You know that, that worship team could have been a little bit better. So and so is just, you know, maybe we should have a better singer in there or and the Lord showed me a long time ago. He said, what kind of worship do you want? What, what do you want to be a part of? Some of us have a tendency to worship. Worship. Yeah, come on, this is good. You know, we're there going, oh, this is awesome. This is really groovy. This is moving me. And, but the Lord was saying, you want that worship team to be powerful? What do we do? Pray for them. Yeah. Honor. Before you, before, even after the Sunday afternoon, you're done. Father, I can't wait till next Sunday. I'm just praying that your power will fall on the worship team. The strongest, the weakest, it doesn't matter. All of it's powerful to him, even the weakest person. I had a pastor's wife come time one time. I went to her. I was leading worship. And uh, I said to her, I said, next Sunday I'm leading. Would you please come and sing with us? Now, she's a tiny little thing. And, uh, you know, she sang before, she, but generally she doesn't sing. Out, up here. And then she kind of come up to me, whispered to me, she says, Jerry, I'm really not that nice. God doesn't want that. What God is showing me is He's looking for worshipers. You could be flat as a whatever. You could be whatever. That's exactly what He wants. He wants your voice, your uniqueness, your talents are His. It's all for Him. So I, we weren't looking for talented singers. Yeah, be nice to have all that. But I'll tell you, our Thursday meetings, like I was saying, is just over the top. The Lord gave me so much in a short period of time, within 30 minutes. That's how the Lord does it for me. You know, some pastors will spend so much a day up till the following Sunday. And I remember, I remember we were speaking and we were invited like up at Quinault somewhere or something. And I was just starting out as a, you know, teaching, if you will. And I had this, I thought was an amazing thing. So see, in my natural eyes, in my spirit, this is going to be powerful. The Lord just shut the door on that message. And it, I looked at it, it was like flat. When you look at something, you read and you go, there's no anointing there. What? That was so powerful four days ago. <laughs> so a day or two later, I'm writing this other thing out. Oh, I'm struggling. And the Lord just had me right up to the Saturday in the middle of the night. 
I mean, I was getting frustrated, and I was like, in my flesh, I was getting frustrated. And you know, Les was like, whoa, are you okay? Or what not? <laughs> I got up early that morning, and I was told that the, this restaurant opened early. And the Lord says, I want you to go there. So I, I, I go there. And the only reason he asked me to go there, because I was going with my notes, and I was going to prepare. I thought, I don't have much here for you people. The Lord says, talk to this woman over here. Yeah, your message is going to come. But you need to talk to this woman over here. She was, wait she was a waitress. And she come up. She served me coffee. She goes, are you visiting? And I go, yes. Yeah. So actually, the Lord told me to tell you something. He wanted me to tell you that I come, I came to, to your community to share at this church. But he says, he has a word for you. And I shared with her what the Lord uh, asked me to share with her. And she goes, you know, it's been a while since I've been to church, so thank you. And she goes, um, I'll be praying for you. You know, and I thought, okay. So you just be obedient to it. Don't, don't worry about being flashy or any of that stuff. Just be simple. Just be, just be, uh, just be yourself. A couple quick stories I just wanted to kind of end, you know, start in with this. But, you know, and I've shared this story before, but there's somebody in this room I think needs to hear it. And basically, uh, we partnered with a ministry out of Vancouver, and they travel internationally. Do you recall the name Forward of Edge. Forward Edge with Joe and Fuso? Uh, and they travel all over Africa, India, all over the place. This tiny little group, well, this tiny little group grew into about 300. And uh, this, this fellow is sharing his story. He's a big, tall, very white man. I say that with all respect. Bright blue eyes, white, wavy hair down here. So this tall, striking man wearing a denim shirt back in the days when the iPods just first came out. Remember those iPods? Whoa, we were cool. Had all our songs on one little tiny device. And he opened his shirt and it said, I Claude. <coughs> so that was his way of sharing his life with other people. He got invited to China. He ended up uh, called to a little tiny community in Tibet. He, he met with the Richard Twist and some of the other guys, and they did some ministry areas. But then when he got done, he says, guys, I'm going to have to leave. I'm supposed to go to this community, and there's a person I'm supposed to talk to, and I'm supposed to have a, an interpreter with me. So, they, so they, he was recommended an interpreter. He goes to this little community, and he goes to every little store and market, did everything. He was there a couple of days, and he uh, he just didn't see this person. So he asked his interpreter, "Is there anyone obscure in your community that that just stands out to you?" And he goes, "Well, as a matter of fact, way up on that hill, and the only way to get up on that hill, it just went up, was this." ladder that was built on the side of a hill and the only way they can get up there is like this. So they walk up. I mean, you climb up there and he says up there on the flat there's a Tibetan monk up there. And he says that would be the obscure person I would imagine you would be looking for. And so he he goes, yeah, that's, I, I think that's the one. So, but the interpreter says, I'm going to take you up to the one level, but after that the, this man scares people. Does that sound familiar? Like biblically, there. Who's this crazy man? Who is this crazy person that people think are is so whacked out? So he gets it, and, and the interpreter stays, and he's climbing up. And so he's a big, tall, white-haired, blue-eyed white man that this Tibetan person probably had never seen a man like him ever. So he pops up, and. The Tibetan guy is standing right in front of him and he looks at him and he fall, he said he fell down. 
he, he just was so startled he fell backwards and and then he calls his interpreter he says this guy's scared to death of me I need, I'm going to need you so he come, reluctantly comes up and he begins to speak to him and then, and then uh, they were invited so they get invited There's, and he said this Tibetan man was very big he was wearing his little wrap his head was shaved and then he began to speak gently and then he tried to grasp flying in an airplane because he sees airplanes in the sky he tried to grasp that this man flew clear across the world he's from Maui he flew clear across the world to China and to Tibet he says this man came all the way to talk to you I don't know about you but I would uh, I'd be paying attention to them if, if God sent somebody clear across wherever to talk to me just me and the guy couldn't figure it out. He goes, well, why? Well, what's the reason? He began to tell him the spiritual aspects of, of who he is. And he says, you you worship, you do this, this. He goes, yeah. He says, and the God that we're going to tell you about is the great above one of Jesus I am. And he, anyway, he says, um, this is his story. He came all this way and he has a story for you. And after he finally understood, he was overwhelmed. I think the Holy Spirit got a hold of him. And uh, he looks at the interpreter and says, what, what do I need to do? So he, he got down and they prayed together and he said, you received the Savior, Christ, into your heart. This man came all the way to tell you the story. And he humbled himself, he prayed, he received Christ right there. And uh, the interpreter was promised to spend time so he could teach him. And I, from what I heard, that this monk became a part of the community, not separated from the community. So here's a little big, striking white man. And he's standing there, and he's sharing this story, and he's looking around at all of us. And he says, you all come from a different place. God wants you to do this. I want you to go be yourself somewhere else. So you go across the world, go be yourself somewhere else. Leslie and I do what we do, and all the Lord wants us to do. I'm going to be who I am. She's not going to try to change and be Stalo Nation. She is Stalo because she's married to me, but she is herself. Be yourself. Don't try to be whatever. Come on. You know, you are who you are. It's beautiful like your voice. Remember in the spirit when I said, God says, I want you to uh, engage in the spirit realm with me. And you will see things. I'll reveal new secrets to you. And I will do all these things. In the First Nation Version Bible here, the indigenous translation, uh, Did we share this Bible with you last time, Scott? Um, okay, yes. And you have... And we, we got one. Yeah, I asked you to get one. Yeah, I wanted you to protocol something. Okay. Yeah, right now. Let's go back and grab one of those Bibles because... This person is so gracious, welcoming, friendly, and we get to hang out at her place and his place. So we have a couple of gifts for Mary and Larry. Which one? One of each. All these? No, one hand drum, one abba drum. I can't see very clear oh, what you're doing, honey. So I have two small. I have two hand drums. Well, one hand drum, one power drum. Oh, okay. That way, Larry and Mary can fight over which one they're going to get. <laughs> Where did Mary go? She's right here oh, in the back row. So here's your Bible of the First Nation Indigenous Translation New Testament. Hey, he's up somewhere. In the car. Don't put him in your car or whatever. <laughs> We are so thankful we had the wonderful dinner last night 
thank you so much for feeding us. And I always warn people that feed me, once you do it, I'm like a puppy dog. I'm back at your door again, just whenever. So for Celeste, the Lord gave me this piece of scripture. So, we who are strong in our spiritual ways should be willing to lend a shoulder to the ones who are weak and unable to walk this road with firm steps. Now, young people, teenagers especially, you young people, the Lord wants you to lend a shoulder to the ones who are weak and unable to walk this road with firm steps. For this road is not only for our own good, but also for the good of all who walk with us. When the Chosen One walked this earth, He came not only to please Himself, but to help others. This is Romans 15. Uh, you know, sorry, verse 1. The sacred teachings say, the insults they spoke against you have landed on me. These words were written down long ago so we would learn from them. It is from the sacred teachings that we find the hope and strength we need to walk the road of life. I pray that the great spirit who walks beside you, keeping your steps firm, will help you walk together in step with Creator sets free. In parentheses, it's Jesus. In this uh, translation, Creator sets free is the name of Jesus. Creator sets free the Chosen One. In this way, you will speak with one voice, giving honor to the Great Spirit, the Father of Creator sets free, our honored Chief, who is the Chosen One. That's actually a wonderful challenge for you and for me. That you are to lend a shoulder on those less fortunate, which I see that you do. But just let you know, Holy Spirit is, has an eye on you and He speaks to others to speak to you. So we who are strong in our spiritual ways should be willing to lend a shoulder to the ones who are weak and unable to walk this road with firm steps. For this road is not only for our own good, but also for the good of all who walk with us. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for this church. Thank you that uh, they're a welcoming church and they're willing to move wherever you want to go. They're not in a box. Lord, I just pray. Scott, could you stand, please? And uh, I want to pray with you. Maybe a couple of the elders or somebody. Maybe a couple of the kids. Can you? Any of you girls want to pray for Pastor with me? Put your hand on his back. There you go. This is perfect. Heavenly Father, we pray for this couple that is called to lead uh, in this way that it's your leading and they'll speak your words and they will do what you call them to do. They want to hear your voice and your voice alone, not be influenced by the world. The world's voice is an influence. Lord, I pray for every part of this church to just be kingdom in you. Lord, bless all the finances that go on, the businesses, parts of it that go on, those who work behind the scenes to make all this work. It's not easy. These guys need you. They need uh, partners in this work. Can you imagine you doing this work all on your own, anyone in this room, but having friends around, members, the congregation around, to support this work, this amazing work, just look forward to what God's going to do. You want pastor to be even more anointed and more empowered by God? Pray for them. Right. Just pray and, and, and just believe and begin. Lord, 
Whatever it is you would have them do, let them do it. We have, we release them to do to be free in whatever it is God's called them to do. Let us not bind them up, tie their hands, tie, put duct tape on their mouths. Father, we release them to do your kingdom work in this community. Do a new thing in this community, Lord. We want to do new things. Sometimes we got to stretch ourselves and just break out of the norm. Whatever it might be. So we pray that. We release it. Lord, we bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So you guys are the winds of praise. And um, I, I was thinking about you. And you know, you, you kind of live in a windy place, right? You guys are here on the coast. And it kind of made me think of Ezekiel 37. Then he said to me, speak. Speak to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. And the Sovereign Lord says that you have, you have an amazing message to share with your community and across the nation because you have the airwaves. You have the newspaper. And I just, I just want to um, confirm what you guys are doing because um, you're at the beginning of something that's growing. It's growing and growing and growing. And you have a voice, and it's an important voice. And both of you have voices that are so very important. And I just ask you, Father, that you would bless them um, with everything that they could possibly need to move forward in their endeavors. Um, this new pastor position, the radio, the newspaper, the people in their community that they surround themselves with that they, they declare the goodness of the Lord to so many different people. And we're thankful for Scott and Kelly, Lord. And I ask you to provide for them everything that they could possibly need, anything that they could ever think or imagine would be beyond that. And we thank you for it, Father. We thank you for their faith. Amen. Thank you. Thank you guys. But it's really important. Is James here? We're going to, at my request, James would be scheduled to speak, but I've asked him to lead us in communion. And uh, so. Oh, thank you so very much. I need help. Oh. 